So let's just briefly talk a little bit about uh, anatomy uh, of the temporal mandibular joint. So, you know, if this is the right side of our, our facial area, you know, this big broad muscle we have here, uh, we call the masseter muscle. I, I call it sort of your chipmunk cheeks. Uh, that's the one when we clench and bite and chew, uh, can get overused and can present areas of muscle pain uh, and dysfunction. Uh, this would be our cheekbone area here. And this whole area, the side of our head, is where the temporalis muscle would lie. Again, the temporalis tends to be a common area where we can have headaches. Uh, but this, again, is one of our primary clenching and chewing muscles. And if we do too much bracing at night, clenching and grinding at night, uh, this can get overactivated. You heard me mention earlier about a type of parafunction called nail biting. Uh, the temporalis can get significantly overactivated through nail biting and, and have lots of muscle pain uh, and contribute to issues. These muscles as well, believe it or not, the masseter and the temporalis can also cause dental pain. They can cause tooth-related pain. So sometimes you might think you have a dental or tooth problem, but you go to your uh, excellent dentist and they reassure you your teeth are fine. That would be an awesome opportunity for a referral back to a physical therapist to see if these muscles are causing your tooth-related pain. Then if we were to peel away these more superficial muscles and structures, we'd actually be able to get down to the bone and joint level, and you would be able to see here your condylar head. So this is your actual bone of your temporal mandibular joint. We often palpate in examination your lateral pole for any tenderness. There's some excellent studies that indicate if you have tenderness on that lateral pole that you probably have some joint swelling or fusion or inflammation of your synovial tissue that may need to be treated. On top of that is the disc. So the disc is the uh, cushion between the condylar head and your temporal bone here, something we call your mandibular fossa and your articular eminence. That disc really takes two convex structures here and provides a lot of stability, joint stability. So as much as we can in therapy, we really try to preserve the relationship of that disc between your condylar head and your temporal bone. But in many conditions, you might have been told you have a disc-related problem, either an anteriorly displaced disc or medially displaced disc. And what can happen is that disc can become dislodged forward and it can possibly either become a popping clicking joint as it uh, relocates when you open and then it subluxes when you close. Or there are times when you might have been told you have a closed lock, which means you cannot open as wide as you were used to. And sometimes that disc can migrate forward and it will block your movement. And then you might wonder, well, my goodness, why do I have so much pain? Uh, one of the biggest reasons they have so much pain is because uh, there's nerve and blood vessels that attach to the back of that disc. And when that disc is forward or possibly sideways displaced, your condylar head or bone is now putting compression and pressure on highly sensitive, painful structures. So that's one of the reasons why we want to try and restore as much as we can this normal relationship. And again, that could be through great manual techniques, various joint mobilizations that we will do in therapy, but also working with a multidisciplinary team, like a dentist who has a specialty in temporal mandibular disorders, and possibly putting in an appropriate splint to help uh, decompress the joint and reduce pressure on those painful structures. Now, you heard me talk earlier about the masseter muscle and the temporalis, which tend to be covering this area. If we peel those away, other areas that we will get to intraorally with gloves on would be your lateral pterygoid muscle and the one way deep in here, your medial pterygoid muscle. Those are often also um, involved and can be painful and sensitive or possibly not functioning properly. So in addition to good manual work and uh, mobilizations, possibly there's going to be some exercise involved to improve the mechanics of your jaw so that, again, all together between the joint, the disc, the muscles, and then, of course, we, we don't even have time to talk about the relationship of your head and your neck. Uh, all of that needs to really work in good unison, believe it or not, for us to open and close and chew and talk and sing and do all the things that bring us joy 
but without pain.